and welcome back now as you can see here we've got the receiver part of the rain sensor working it's um, being displayed on this 20 by 4 LCD so we've got four lines by 20 columns and you can also see here I'm using the big digits program that um, I showed you in a previous video which is on the screen now however you'll see a, a demo of all this in a minute so I'm not going to repeat what I recorded yesterday and the I, reason I recorded it yesterday it was because the, yesterday it was raining and you could actually see some of the bits that were happening on here. Now just in case you forgot what the transmitter module was, do look at video 46 and it describes this in some detail. Now let's have a look at the receiver. We've got a nano in the middle of course, 433 megahertz receiver, Benny's touchpad to turn it on and off, a speaker, an independent beeper, an LED and of course an LCD unit 20 by 4 Okay, receiver, beeper, that's it, speaker up there, and that is our rain sensor detector. And you can see all this and the and the um, the speech stuff that I've got connected to the speaker via that MP3 player, which was also done in the previous video, although it was slightly enhanced for this. That's also in the demo. Um, now the only thing that I've changed since yesterday when I recorded it was this on-off switch, which is a, a touch switch, which was you've seen in the um, fridge alarm project um, which I turn on and off stop Benny knowing I'm opening the fridge so if I hold this it beeps and goes off and then when I touch it again nothing happens whatsoever because like all things that are live I don't know they go wrong don't they let's try that again right there we are the reason it didn't come back on again because what I've said in the code which we're going to go through very briefly in a minute once you've touched this wire until you let go of it, and I do mean let go, not hold hold it like I'm doing now, so the reading drops below 100, don't take any more input. Just just wait, just suspend until that drops. That's why it didn't work there. So there we are. That's working then, really, isn't it? It's quite good. So, okay, here we have the um, LCD. Now, LCDs are pretty easy to do, and I thought long and hard about what I should be doing. And as you can see, it's not exactly complete. It's not built into a box. But I'm not going to show you that this time, not until it's it's done sometime in the future anyway, because I showed you the transmission, uh, the transmitter part of this project all built into the box. That was fine, but it does take quite a long time. So I'm just showing you this in its raw format, but this is pretty much good to go, actually, certainly hardware wise. So I am going to build this all into a box and then do some more coding, because whilst the coding is fair to middling on this at the moment, there's a few things I want to do. For example, as the demo will show you, I've got um, three files on here to give you three different warnings depending on the rain level that's detected. Well, it'd be nice to have a variation on that, wouldn't it? So for example, for light drizzle, at the moment it says attention light drizzle, which we'll hear in the video. But it'd be nice to have, I don't know, one of five different tracks to be um, played, wouldn't it? Uh, which it can randomly select. I mean, the Arduino can randomly select any one of those tracks and just play any one of them to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, ditto, the on-off uh, speech, which you'll also hear, when you switch this on for the first time, something comes out of here. Well, it'd be nice to uh, change that as well. All that, though, is really coding, plus the fact I've got to get the files on that little um, SD card in there. And I've ordered some two gigabyte cards which are only like a pound a piece i believe i might have mentioned this before i mean at the moment there's a 32 gig in there which is ridiculous to put that in there it's just wasteful so i'm going to take that out and put that back in my handheld camera and put in a two gig one in there which would be still stupidly large for the number of files i want to put on there but that's the cheapest you can get Whoop! touch the on off look okay right um what else am i going to talk to you about so here we are with a quick demo then of the rain receiver and as you can see it's a bit of a mess of wires because i'm not actually boxed it up or anything because uh, i don't think that really adds any value at this time you saw me boxing up the transmitter this is going to be a similar exercise so let's plug this in because it is actually raining at the moment so i thought now's the time to actually show you what's going on right let's see what happens so powering up as you see i've got He most certainly is. Now, that's the loudspeaker you're hearing. Um, I've also got 
apart from that little loudspeaker I've got this beeper this beeper connected up sort of as an independent really one because I don't really well trust I suppose is the right word I don't trust this mp3 player if that goes wrong or something happens to it which doing playing about you know it has sort of well, I wouldn't say malfunction it's probably been more a fault of me not connecting something up correctly but I thought if that does malfunction then this whole system the transmitter the receiver everything is useless so it's almost like um, a fail safe this beeper if nothing else happens this will beep to alert somebody that there is in fact some some rain now I'm hoping this is going to lock onto a signal by this little yellow aerial here because um, quite frankly it's been a bit temperamental depending on where I put this um, and depending on what I power it with would you believe if I power it via this little um, 18650 battery then it seems to pick up the signal a lot better and a lot quicker when I power it via this um, computer power USB it just takes forever once it's locked on it seems to work okay but I'm guessing the noise on here or something is I don't know it upsets something and there is noise on these um, USB cables that go into hubs because when I click connect up this um, Bluetooth speaker on it there's a buzzing on it that I don't get if I connect it up to a clean power supply so probably a lesson learned there is that uh, don't connect it up to your hub so if it doesn't lock up certain I'm going to have to um, well try and move it or power something in so as you can see what it's done at the moment it's just put a title up and it's put up the digits we're using the large digits feature that uh, I did in one of my previous videos I thought well why not I want something to show because this is going to show the outdoor temperature anyway and ideally when it when it um, connects up we're going to have the humidity here and what sort of rain level we got um, additionally we've got the touch switch here though well this wire really I suppose this wire is the touch switch if I hold that it goes off no oh, wasn't quick enough it's about half a second delay so off and on uh, no interrupt on there of course which is why it's a little bit laggy but okay for this sort of purpose the idea being that having been warned by the speaker and the beeper you don't want to be warned every two seconds which is about what this cycles around at um, so you can then say right you've told me I brought the cat in or done what I needed to do I'm switching you off now what I haven't done yet in the coding is to say alright you've switched me off but I need to sort of automatically reset that so once it goes back to dry for whatever period we deem to be dry then it needs to switch itself back on again or it needs to wait for the transmitter to switch back on again if you remember in the transmitter module there was a touch pad outside um, which may or may not be forgotten hence this but anyway that sort of bit of coding can be played about with as time goes on so the 433 receiver is here um, standard Arduino Uno that will be probably be done on a nano that's done on the large digits and that's pretty easy to do mp3 player we covered that in one of my previous videos shown on screen now now whereas previously we just played the tracks in sequence this time I've got uh, three tracks on here plus that intro track you heard um, and I'll give you the URL where you can type stuff in and just have it play um, I'll go through that in the main video actually rather than now because I really wanted to get this set up now it's obviously not going to play ball does it ever Blue Peter presenters probably know all about this so I'm going to try and connect up a different power source and see what happens it might connect up I think I'm on the edge of uh, the receiver's limit here so let's just plug that in see what happens I'll turn it on first might help oh. attention well there we are I don't know if you caught that but it will come on again in two seconds so let's hold that up attention light drizzle has been detected and as I said the beeper is also wired in not too many cables here so there's the beep attention light drizzle has been detected there we are now that's going to continue like that until we switch it off with this touch switch attention light so we'll switch it off on the next loop round it will just remain silent and as you can see here on the display it looks very washed out on camera I might add this it's lovely deep blue in real life light rain relative humidity 
and the temperature out there plus 17. The humidity is actually quite interesting because uh, you see it go well up to the 80s when it's raining but uh, when it's a really nice dry summer's day it goes right down to about 20 and other times it sort of hovers about the 40 50 mark the higher this is the clammier it feels so there it is that's sort of a, a quick demo um, i'll go through the code and everything else um, in the other part of the video i just wanted to give you a flavor of this actually working and uh, it, it is actually working attention it has indeed. That's why Benny's not outside. In fact, he's outside this very room meowing to get in because he probably can hear me talking. Right, there we are then. That's a, a quick demo. I'm just dropping this bit of video into the main one because I had to wait for it to rain. I thought I've just finished this actually with the touch switch and everything. So really the next step for this is to put it into a project box and, um, well, program a bit more and make it a bit more sophisticated. But as it stands, this is a perfectly workable solution and uh, I'm quite pleased with it actually the way it's turned out it's just taken forever to do because all this wiring and mucking about it's probably about you know six projects in one isn't it plus the coding so anyway there it is that's the uh, the demo of the live project and uh, well I'll see you back in the uh, remaining video well let's let's have a look at the um, the code let me move, just move over to the code window or rather I should really say um, the debug window let me just move the this project off right and what you can see in this bit here this is the serial monitor um, just like the um, Arduino one this is a different IDE but pretty much the same and as you can see it's stopped look at 415 number 413 I've had this running for days and days and days on end and it's really reliable but the minute I'm, I move um, if I move this this board around whilst it's plugged into the USB cable here to, the, to my hub it just freezes or, or takes forever to reconnect. When I power it from this um, 18650 battery, it's it's instant, straight away joins up. So I mentioned that in the uh, video I'm about to drop in here. Anyway, enough of that then. So it stopped now, but as you can see, we're, we're getting the raw value back. Whoops, not from there. It's That's the raw value. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've described all that in the previous transmitter part of this project. So the first part, R stands for the rain level from 0 to 1023. C is the, um, the temperature, 24. D is the digital rain, which quite frankly we didn't need, but there we are. H is the humidity. K is the light level. So 142, it's um, about 6 o'clock here now, something like that, in the summer. So it's fair to middling. It goes down to about, I can't remember now, is it 30 in bright sunshine, something like that. And of course, at night time, it goes up to about a thousand, just over a thousand. And the last two digits here are the error bits. So if there's an error, um, that will be detected there. But I do nothing with it um, on here, on here yet. What I need to do is detect that as an error and, and put something like, you know, error detected or something. So I know that there's something wrong with the transmitter which incidentally has only gone wrong once since it's been plugged in. It's been running 24-7 since I plugged it in, which is pretty good. The other thing I haven't done, which I will have to code, not now, but sometime in the future, is that uh, some sort of heartbeat. Because whether I've switched this on or off, we want to know that we're getting a signal, don't we? So how do I know? How do I know this is actually the current um, situation? Well, at the moment I don't I'm just guessing it could be stuck waiting for a signal to come in so I'm gonna to have to say on here whether I've got a signal or not keep monitoring the fact whether you've had a signal in the last I don't know let's say 30 seconds given that this is transmitted at every two seconds if after 30 seconds we haven't had a signal it should display something on here but that's all for the future at the moment this is fine as it is but what I want to do is build it into the box and then be able to program it whilst it's in the box without keep on taking the nano out. If you remember in my previous projects, I always put the nano plugged into header sockets so that I can take it out. But this time I'm going to try a different approach. So if we look at the browser window, this one here, what I'm looking for here is a USB socket that I can have um, on the chassis of whatever box it is that I use. So 
let's take let's take this one as an example. Um, I've been in this one before. Oh, it's gone off screen. Hang on. Let me uh, see if I can move that. There we are. Right. So this is sort of the typical thing I want. I've I've yet to find a chassis socket like this with a micro or US um, mini USB. They're either full size type A or B. Um, but this one does go, as it shows there, look, in the expanded picture, to a mini, which is what the Nano is. So I could plug that end in to the, uh, the Nano itself. This bit here then goes on the chassis, and I can then plug in a standard USB cable with a, some sort of conversion socket or something at the end. That's not an issue. That means I can then actually power the unit up and program it in situ without having to take the case off and all the rest of it just to get the Nano out which um, probably would encourage me a bit to enhance the coding. Right, as far, the, as far as the coding goes then, let's see what we've got so far. Now, I've got to admit, this is quite a long bit of code, so I'm not going to go through it, to be quite honest. Uh, I'll put it up there for you to download, because uh, some bits may be interesting. Some bits you may have seen before. After all, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know. We are using quite a lot of libraries, um, so the virtual wire library for the transmitter, of course, the capacitance sensor, which we use in the fridge alarm, software serial for the um, touch switch, uh, wire, which we're using for the MP3 player, and liquid crystal, of course. Now, and this one I've covered in more than enough detail in the big digits one, and I'll explain why this particular library is a much better bet than some of them. Um, for a start, there's very few parameters you need to add to it rather than a whole series of numbers that nobody seems to know what they stand for. Okay, um, now this is all fairly self-documenting, really. Uh, oh yes, here you can see I've, I've just arbitrarily put some values in here for the uh, for the rain level. Let me um, just expand this a little bit. Now that's a little bit bigger now, isn't it? Right. Um, Got arbitrary values for the daylight. If remember, I said that when the daylight falls down below a certain level, we're not going to do anything. Fine, we'll do that. The beeper pin, touch pins, MP3 player. We did all this. The only difference is, of course, on here now we play specific tracks depending on how rainy it is. So if it's just drizzling, you get the track that says light drizzle has been detected. If it's pouring cats and dogs, you get one saying just that. So there's a slight difference in what we do to initiate that. Here's my large digit. I've literally copied and pasted that. I was hoping, incidentally, to put a minus figure in here, but of course I've discovered that we've used all the eight. We can only get eight special custom characters on that LCD. That's, uh, so this LCD allows you to upload eight different characters, and that's all explained in that video. So I couldn't put a minus, I'm just using a standard one. And in fact, if you look really closely at it, just move the camera down a bit, you see where it says a plus, that's the standard plus figure, but the minus figure is going to be in the same area as where this is. Let me just go back to Workbench. So where that plus is, so it's the lowest row and the first available spot for any character, and the minus, get, this gets replaced with this one here. You see this? It's just got a single bar. This whole square here is just the lower bar. So I replace that with the one above it, and there's a big fat minus, rather than just a little tiny minus here. And that actually works quite well. Um, that only occurred to me at the last minute, because obviously it's going to go below zero, I would imagine, in, in the uh, winter. Several months away yet. Right, back to the code then. Um, custom character was on that. Liquid crystal, yeah. Okay, just declaring a few things. This this little routine here is the standard debug routine that I use. Ah, now I've come up with an idea about this. This is great. What this allows you to do is to have one method to write out your serial prints. And as I explained before, the serial.print line has several overloads. That is the same method with different signatures. That is, it accepts different parameters. But you can't do a debug uh, print like that unless you specify all the different parameters so that you can have an integer in here or a string or a float or whatever it takes. But by doing it with this template, 
it means you can just have one and the compiler works it all out. However, I've got even a better idea now. When this unit is powered up via the USB as it is now, chances are that it's going to be connected to your computer, so then you want the debug on. When it's not powered by this, when it's powered by either VIN or this little um, this jack plug here, which is uh, you know 9 or 12 volts, then if there's nothing plugged in here, chances are you don't want the debug running and you shouldn't leave the debug lines switched on when you're running not in debug mode, if that makes sense, um, because it just slows the whole program down. So what I'm going to actually do eventually, and certainly well, when I build this, I'll have to do it, is um, have a, some kind of detection to say, am I being powered from USB? If so, switch on this debug mode. Otherwise, don't. Because if there's nothing plugged into that debug into that USB port, then there's no way for the data to go. Now that's slightly more complicated because I'm pretty sure the USB bit just goes straight to the plus five volts, um, and the plus five volts is also supplied by the um, voltage converter on here when you put um, a jack nine volt, twelve volt jack in here. So I've got to somehow figure out on the nano, not on the new nano, incidentally how I can detect whether it's plug powered from here, or it might be easier actually just to say, take the power from the V in for a uh, voltage dropper, you know, series um, resistor and another one, uh, voltage splitter, potential divider, let's use the right term, and just use that to detect, am I being powered from the jack? Because if I'm being powered from the jack, then chances are there's nothing plugged into the USB. In fact, I don't think you're supposed to do both, are you? I've never actually done that, or have I? Can't remember. Anyway, if I'm being powered by the jack, then chances are I don't want the debug switched on. So this this will then be automatic, if you like. When you plug in via the USB, you get the debug switches, and therefore you can read all this stuff in the serial monitor, and if not, it gets switched off. So that was very long-winded, wasn't it? Okay, right, the setup does all various things with the uh, receiver. This is pretty much the same as the transmitter, so I'm not gonna go into that. The touch mode, we've, we've already done with the fridge alarm. Um, MP3, we've covered that. Yes, now here's the uh, slight difference, look. When we send the command now, we don't say just play, play the first track or the next track or anything like that. By using um, hex 12, we can say play track XXX, which means the track that's named XXX. So when you've got 99 in there, what it's actually doing, it's looking for a track that starts with 0099. So this is an online tone generator, and what it basically allows you to do is type stuff in here, and then you can just play it. And there's various voices, look. Uh, ooh, that's interesting, it doesn't show the pop-up window. Let me switch uh, to the browser, just uh, to the uh, monitor very quickly for this one. All right. The reason I don't like using the monitor because my resolution is so high, it's sometimes difficult to see. But you can see this okay. So um, if I click this, you'll see the drop-down list. There's all these different voices. Click the play button to hear the sentence spoken out loud. You can change this text to whatever you want. So that was um, a bit Stephen Hawking-ish, wasn't it? Um, but you can change the actual voice. So if we use US English, for example, here and play it again. Click the play button to hear this sentence spoken out loud. You can change this text to whatever you want. Wow, that was loud. I hope that didn't um, overload. Let me turn that down a bit. Uh, what else have you got? Oh yeah, you can have fun by trying to make it say it in Spanish or French or German or something. It reads it as though it was its own language, but it sounds really odd. Look, let's try this in German, right? Of course, it's not going to translate it. It'll try and say those words but with a German accent. Click the play button to hear a sentence spoken out loud. You can change Atlas text to whatever you want. That's amazing, isn't it? Now you know why Germans sound like that. Okay, and uh, as I have German ancestry, that wasn't meant with any disrespect to any German listeners I have. Uh, yeah, in fact, I should do a multilingual sort of greeting, shouldn't I? So, guten Tag und willkommen. Ich hoffe, dass du hier Spaß hast und uh, etwas lernst vielleicht auch, ja? Yeah? Und uh, schreib mir mal. Okay, that was my German. Okay, gut und weiter. Right, so that was where I get the uh, sounds for my uh, intro on my MP3. 
So back to the code window, and that's how you send each of those tracks out. So it's X12 and then whatever number you want. This is um, a two byte uh, number though, okay? Uh, this is the LCD bit, how you do all that, and that's all described in some detail in one of my other previous videos for large digits. Right, back to wherever it was, um, code window. Here we are. Uh, oh yeah, that's the other thing I want to do, by the way. Um, this backlight on here um, can be switched off by a little, uh, this little jumper, where is it, here? This little jumper here, let me make it big. You see this little jumper, that turns the backlight on and off, but also you can do it programmatically, and I've pulled a wire out. Uh, never mind, we'll carry on. Um, but you can do it uh, programmatically by saying backlight, and it, you can switch it on or off. I think it might be false or true or something in there. Anyway, you can do that. So what I want to do, if it um, detects a problem, for example, I can flash that backlight to sort of draw attention to it without being noisy about it. Okay, so then we load up our special characters, print a few things to the screen initially, say it's done, and well, then we just go through this loop. What it first does is say, am I touching this, this little uh, thing here, which will be a proper little touch switch like it was with the transmitter. I might even get one of those again. You know those cat collar things that looks like a cat? It'd be appropriate and I oh, can't remember how much it was now. Quid was it? pound fifty, And it looks nice and it is metal. So, so it gets that. It um, checks for um, the rain um, and it maps it into five levels. Okay, so obviously the input is going to be from 0 to 1023. We're saying, forget that, we're saying um, 0 to 5. It might even be to 4, actually. Whatever. It's 0 to 5, 5 ranges or 4 ranges, 5 being dry, 0 being basically underwater, and the rest meaning something. Okay, So it prints the, uh, the rain description, that's drizzle, no rain, stormy, or whatever, on the LCD. Uh, I will plug this in again, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, now there you can just see the startup. Now, this um, looks really washed out on camera, but it's nice and blue in real life, so ignore the fact it looks a bit bit mediocre, frankly. It's, it's beautiful in real life, really deep blue, ocean blue, I suppose you'd call it. Now that's waiting for a signal, which in fact it will never receive, I don't think, at the moment, all this going on. So we just move on. So it prints out um, the description there, prints out the relative humidity. What else does it do? It prints out whether it's too dark or not. Yeah, afterwards, you have to be careful. If it's not too dark, I'll just print out spaces because unless you actually clear what's on here, nothing's going to clear it for you. So you could end up with like bits of word left over if you, if you print short and long things. That also is why, if we just scroll back a bit, when we go to the description of the rain, here we are, look, stormy, pouring, light, drizzle, no rain. They all have to be the same length. That's why you've got spaces at the back. Because otherwise, if it prints out light initially, then pouring, then goes back to light, you'll get light or something like that, where it's left the last few characters on there. Right, so just bearing that in mind. If you don't put something on that screen, nobody's going to do it for you. So back in here, and then it says, right, if I'm active, active being determined by this, this touch switch, okay, if I'm active, and it's not too dark, just in case somebody forgets to switch it off. We don't want this coming on at 2 a.m. telling it's raining. I'll, I'll never be forgiven. Um, it just says, is it stormy? Is it rainy? If it is, send out a number of beeps. Plus, play the correct MP3 track. So this is playing track two. This is playing track one. And I guess somewhere they are track three. Okay. And in fact, three is played for... Oh no, this one here, uh, track one is played for both light rain and drizzle because I didn't create enough MP3 tracks, but that will be corrected in future. And then there's all these different methods, you know, getting the data, which is receiving it from the, uh, the, res the uh, receiver, which is tucked away at the back there, not receiving at the minute. In fact, shall we just see what happens if I plug in my, um, my 18650 thing, this thing with my name on it, just see if it springs into life because it's really irritating when that happens. Right, let's see what happens. Ah, there we are, look. Oh. Straight on, look. 
and it says no rain. In fact, it was so quick it didn't even go through the initialization routine. Let's try that once more. Let me just turn off the uh, power. All right, power's off. We'll just give it um, a few seconds. All right, what's happening now? There we are, straight on. Um, the initialization sound seems to have disappeared. I think I pulled out another wire. That's the trouble with these um, lash-ups, isn't it? They do. They are a bit fragile, I think is the word. Right. Um, let's go carry on through the code now then, just to sort of see if there's anything interesting. This all prints out stuff. You'll be able to read this, and it would be blindingly obvious what it does. This splits up the data, by the way, so and it's very highly tied to my data stream. I was going to do it generic, but I thought, you know what, it's just going to take too long and it's only for my personal use. So what I do, I split the incoming data from the R to the C to get the value and from the C to the D and H to K and so forth. Basically the um, the data stream that comes in on that uh, serial port, which uh, there we are. So this here, so if you look at this, it just goes from one, one of these characters to the next and takes out the value in between. Okay, and then converts that to an integer. There's the uh, the split. There's the sending of the MP3, which is taken from my previous video. Prints the temperature with the minus. There's the. Uh, that's interesting. It says there I'm printing an underscore for the minus, not what I told you at the beginning of this video with that special character. Now I certainly tried it with that special character. Maybe I just thought it wasn't worth it. Anyway, you'll better see that. Maybe maybe this is an older version of the code. Um, of course, now, when you do print this um, this temperature, the 2 and the 4, you have to print each digit separately. So the value that's coming in here, the current temperature, we divide by 10. Okay, and that gives us the 2, so we know which one to print there. And then we take the modulus of 24, modulus being the remainder, when we divide by 10. So divide by 10, it's 2 remainder, Four, and that's what we print in that spot. That all works quite well. There's the big num stuff, the printout is just a little helper method. There's the touch routine. Now the touch routine says, as the previous one I think says, don't do this every you know millisecond because the poor old user has never had a chance to take his finger off the button yet. So it does it every half a second, and this one has been slightly enhanced to say on this line here. Okay, we've had a touch. We've, we've acknowledged we've had a touch, we've done a beep or whatever. Now I'm not doing anything whilst I'll still detect that touch. So until somebody takes their finger off, nothing else happens. So I touch it, it goes beep, the light stays off, nothing happens now. We're in this little routine that you can see on screen until I take my finger off, and now it knows that it's, it can do it again. So now when I do it, it's on and off again. Okay. Right. Um, Camera's a bit high. I think all the rest you just now yeah, that's that's printing the initial bit. Um, oh, this is a test. That's right. You can uh, use this when you're setting this up. It's always a good idea when you're setting things like this up to have a little routine that just tests out the bit you're actually doing. So I had a little test for MP3 player, a little test for the LCD screen, because otherwise you're testing more than one thing, aren't you? You're testing your initial hardware setup plus program plus the bit you just added and if it doesn't work as this didn't work initially I'm thinking well what do I do now how do I know where the problem lies so I've just downloaded that little test routine that you see on the screen there ran that in the setup and got that to work and when that worked then I thought right that's it now I know there's LCD bits working I can move on so that's all the code now I'm not expecting anybody out there to use this code as is, and it's for my very specific purposes, isn't it? This is a, my actual own project. But there are some things in here you might find useful, and if there's things in here you, you don't understand, by all means put a question down below, I'll s attempt to answer it. Well, I will answer it, whether I attempt to <laughs> satisfy your actual query or not is another matter. Um, and that's it really. I'll put the, um, the link to that um, this one here, the online tone generator. There's also another one, but unfortunately you have to pay for the actual sounds. It looked pretty interesting though. Uh, let me see if I can just get that one up. 
it was this one here now these are all loads and loads of sounds let me just make this a little bit smaller right there are sound snap um, now I can play a couple of these I would imagine so let's have a look all phases complete it says this says so let's have, let me hold my Bluetooth speaker up to the microphone oh oh that wasn't the play button now it tells you the prices here like five sounds fifteen dollars three dollars a sound too much for me I'm afraid 20 sounds 20 I suppose if you're doing a commercial stuff I'm, I guess that's what you're buying it for isn't it for commercial stuff so um, let's just see what it sounds like all phases complete mm, what did that say all phases complete all phases complete okay it said all phases complete the American accent um, I mean the quality of these is good but I'm not spending three dollars a sound for my own little rain detector no siree I'd rather have a a lower quality free version but I guess they're in it to make money same as everybody else okay so I'll put those uh, links down there you you might have a, an actual requirement for those though and three dollars might not be anything so I'm going to look around for my USB cable that I can put into a box and sometime in the future I'll just sort of show you this project when it's all built but I'm sure you in your imagination if if you can go back to my transmitter part of the project it'll be very similar to that when it's all built except of course it will have this nice little screen on the front and this uh, this touch thing here again um, which I'll keep accidentally touching in this video and it'll all be pretty good okay until we meet again in the next video thanks for watching I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Please leave comments down below, subscribe, share and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.